Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 918. world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the products that are in shortages right now because there are a lot of them, and it seems like there's more being announced every day. So we're gonna get on top of what is actually in short supply, why that is, and what you can do about it. So this article comes to us from Yahoo Money. It says, tennis balls, pickles, and five other surprising shortages right now. If you thought you'd seen the last of the pandemic shortages while you replenished your toilet paper supply last year, you're in for a surprise. Tons of goods are still in short supply across the country, thanks in part to the COVID-19 Delta variant, causing factory shutdowns and labor shortages. That doesn't just mean you'll have trouble finding these products. It also means that when you do get your hands on them, they could be priced higher than usual. By now, you're probably no stranger to shortages. In 2020, it was hard to get a hold of cleaning supplies like disinfecting wipes, hand soap, and paper towels. And you may have heard about the global chip shortage, which is making it harder to buy everything from Xbox consoles to smartphones. But as the world continues to grapple with the effects of the pandemic, you might be surprised by some of the current shortages. Here are seven goods that you might have to hunt extra for right now, from golf balls to chicken wings. So I'm going to share what this article says, but I also have a couple of other articles I want to share with you that are giving updates and a little bit of a different take on the story in terms of what other shortages we have. So it's not all as insignificant as tennis balls and pickles. There are some things that are pretty significant that I want to talk with you about and alert you to. So first, tennis balls. Tennis balls are hard to come by, at least in some parts of the country, Vice reported. Players in online forums have been complaining about the lack of tennis balls, and Vice confirmed with manufacturers and distributors that there is indeed a shortage. A customer service supervisor from online retailer Tennis Warehouse told Vice that there are shipping delays, as well as reduced staff availability and productivity at manufacturing facilities due to COVID-19 protocols. Secondly, pickles. The release of a new Burger King chicken sandwich was delayed in some Midwestern states earlier this year. The culprit? Pickles. We have pickles for Whoppers, but these are very special, bigger, crunchier, zesty pickles, said Jim McDonald, vice president of operations for Burger King Grand Rapids in Michigan. It's not actually the pickles that were causing the problem, but the pickle jars, which were apparently hard to come by during the manufacturing slowdown and supply chain issues the pandemic caused. Number three, golf balls. Tennis players aren't alone. There's a big shortage of golf balls this season too, according to Golf Balls Direct, a used golf balls distributor. Not only are the used balls the distributor accepts for its recycling process in short supply, but so are the big brand names. That's because of delays and factory closings in 2020, Golf Balls Direct told customers on its site. Number four, paper bags. While McDonald's might not have a pickle problem, the company is suffering from a different shortage, paper bags. The fast food chain recently told restaurant owners to limit orders of bags from suppliers, according to the Wall Street Journal. Other chains are facing shortages too. In April, Starbucks told The Insider that their stores were seeing a shortage of cups, flavored syrups, and baked goods. Number five, chicken wings. Before you stress out about which sauce could accompany your chicken wings, Make sure you can even get chicken wings at all. There's been a shortage, which the National Chicken Council has blamed on harsh weather this past winter. Plus, demand surpassed supply during the pandemic when takeout and delivery became everyone's favorite dinner option. Number six, dogs. They're cute, they're cuddly, and now they're getting harder to come by. In July, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention temporarily suspended the importation of dogs from more than 100 countries that have been classified as high-risk countries for dog rabies, including China, India, and Russia. 
Meanwhile, dogs were in high demand during the pandemic as everyone was stuck inside and looking for some company. More than one in five respondents, or 22%, to a money survey conducted in March of 1,300 pet owners said they had welcomed a new animal into their lives since March 2020. Number seven, couches. If you think about all the supply chain issues that are making back to school shopping more expensive, this one makes sense. Before furniture arrives at a store, or thanks to online shopping, your doorstep, it relies on raw materials like lumber, labor, and transportation, all of which are facing issues like factory shutdowns, overwhelmed ports, and shipping and labor shortages. A sofa normally would take eight to 10 weeks in regular times. Now they're taking 25 to 35 weeks for a special order. The co-owner of Georgie Brothers Furniture Showroom in San Francisco told Slate in July. All right, so that was a Yahoo article. I also have an article from CNN Business that talks about some different things that you can't get right now. These things are a little bit more serious than some of the incidental items that that article had. So I wanted to share this with you too. It says tacos, coffee, cars, jet fuel, computer chips, Nike shoes, and school supplies. What do they all have in common? They're all nearly impossible to find or getting there. Shortages are popping up across the supply chain as the pandemic messes with shipping demand, supply, and all the other levers of the global economy. One expert said the pervasive shortages might last well into 2022. Here's what's hard to get, why, and for how long, according to CNN Business Reporters. Number one, cars. Anyone trying to buy a car knows how brutal it is to find one right now, and it's not getting better anytime soon. Goldman Sachs said this week that new car inventories are unlikely to recover until September and will remain well below their pre-pandemic levels through the end of the next year. The bank said it expects new car inventories to fall further in August to around 1 million vehicles before beginning to steadily increase in September. The firm forecasts new car prices will likely continue to rise over the next few months, peaking around 6% above their pre-pandemic level toward the end of this year. The problem stems from the global shortage of computer chips, which control dozens of functions in all modern vehicles. Number two, coffee. Your morning cup of joe might soon get more expensive because of supply shortages recently caused by bad weather in Brazil. The frost has driven Arabica coffee prices up this week, but prices were rising even before the cold snap for a number of reasons, including Brazil's dry weather, protests in Colombia, and the increase in shipping container costs, among other factors. If these prices stay elevated, then they will have to be passed on to consumers, said Carlos Mera, who heads up Rabobank's agri-commodities markets team and is an expert on coffee prices. But big companies have ways to keep prices relatively stable for customers, he added. There's some good news, though. Starbucks is not increasing its prices. The company is able to avoid hikes because its purchasing strategy is to buy coffee ahead of time and lock in prices. Number three, computer chips. The great computer chip shortage of 2021 shows no signs of slowing. Intel warned earlier this month that the global shortage of semiconductors that has hobbled the auto industry and raised the cost of some consumer electronics could last until the middle of 2023. While I expect shortages to bottom out in the second half of 2021, it will take another one to two years before the industry is able to completely catch up with demand, CEO Patrick Geisinger recently said. That's terrible news for consumer electronics and manufacturers, but especially for car makers, many of which have been forced to idle plants this year because they can't get enough chips, limiting the supply of new vehicles at a time when used car prices are soaring. General Motors had to stop making most of its full-size pickup trucks for a week in July. Number four, jet fuel. There's not enough jet fuel at several Western US airports to meet the increased demand for leisure travel. That could end up causing some flights to be canceled or force airlines to make extra stops to fuel up on longer routes. The issue is most pronounced at airports that are near popular vacation destinations, including some in Idaho, Montana, Nevada, Utah, and Wyoming. Part of the problem is a shortage of tank truck drivers needed to deliver fuel. An estimated 20% of tankers nationwide are parked due to a lack of qualified drivers, according to an industry trade group. That shortage has already been affecting gas stations. 
but airlines and airports are also struggling to get the fuel they need because pipelines shifted away from carrying jet fuel when all travel ground to a near halt last year. Now jet fuel can't get the pipeline space it needs to keep up with the resurgence in air travel. To alleviate the issue, some aircraft flying to those affected locations are carrying more fuel than normal so they won't need as much when they refuel before departing again. Number five, Nike shoes. If you're hoping to scoop up a fresh pair or two of Nikes, you might have to move fast. Nike could run out of the sneakers it sources from Vietnam as the spread of COVID-19 accelerates in the region, according to a report released this month from Pangeva, the supply chain research unit of S&P Global Market Intelligence. It noted that two of Nike's suppliers in Vietnam have already halted production. Nike said in an email to CNN Business that it is confident in its ability to navigate these near-term dynamics and we remain prudent in our planning. The company said it is prioritizing the health and safety of its employees and suppliers and expects its suppliers to do the same to prioritize the health and livelihoods of their employees. Number six, school supplies. Back to school shopping is always a nightmare. This year expect it to be even worse. Although parents might be used to encountering shortages of items such as sneakers, backpacks, and gadgets later in the school shopping season, which typically lasts from mid-July through the end of August, products are expected to be in tight supply even earlier. That demand is also coming up against tight inventory levels and delayed shipments, which will impact retailers' ability to replenish products on shelves later in the summer. What we will likely see is more limited choice and lower stock levels towards the end of the back to school period, said Neil Saunders, retail analyst and managing director at Global Data Retail. Some consumers will inevitably miss out on things they really want to purchase. Categories in most danger of shortages include backpacks, stationery, sports equipment, laptops, and tablets, he said. And finally, Taco Bell. The popular fast food chain said that some of its customers' favorite items might not be available at U.S. restaurants. The fast food chain expressed regrets on its website, saying that because of national ingredient shortages and delivery delays, some locations might not be able to serve their favorite dishes. Apologies for the inconvenience, and we hope to feed fans current Taco Bell cravings again soon, Taco Bell said in a statement to CNN Business. It didn't specify which menu items or cities were affected. All right, and finally, we have an article about possible Christmas item shortages. And this article comes to us from Forbes. So I'm gonna cut into the middle of this Forbes article and get to the meat of it. It says, inflation hits a 13 year high. For the last three months, consumer inflation as measured by the CPI has crept up from 5% in May to 5.4% in June and July compared to a year ago. The last time it was so high was from June through August 2008, after which it leveled off to an average moderate rate of 3.8% and even declined in 2009 by 0.4%. Many voices are raised to reassure consumers that these increases are only a temporary blip, supported by the fact that the CPI only rose 0.5% in July from the preceding month, which it was down from 0.9% in June on a seasonally adjusted basis. But that doesn't feel so reassuring to consumers who are seeing the prices for so many goods rising so fast. While food overall is up only 3.4%, the cost for meat is up 5.9%, eggs 5.7%, and milk 6.2%. In addition, particularly hard hit by rising prices are furniture and bedding up 8.8%, major appliances up 12.3%, pants up 11.2%, dresses up 18.8%, jewelry up 10.1%, and hotels up 21.5%. And perhaps the most impactful price increase for many Americans is the rising cost of energy up 24.4% overall, with gasoline rising 41.8% over the past year. On yesterday's Neil Cavuto show, Former president and CEO of Walmart, U.S. Bill Simon, warned we need to pay the most attention to gas prices to anticipate inflation's impact on consumer spending. While prices on an item-by-item -item basis are moving up only slightly, the cost of gas puts the greatest constraints on consumers' spending across the board. 
Nothing in the near term looks to reduce the price of gas, and nothing in the near term looks to quell the steady rise in prices in other consumer goods either because of what is causing them, the disrupted supply chain. We still have a very challenged supply chain, sitting in ports where they can't be filled and returned to ports where they can. This container shortage is causing a doubling or tripling in the cost to ship product. So everything in the container is going to cost more, Jaggi says. This is a global supply chain disruption. It's massive from Bangladesh, South Korea, India, China, Europe, and the U.S. Besides impacting the price consumers pay for goods at retail, the kinks in the global supply chain will result in product shortages, especially for the most in-demand products going into the holiday season, like home furnishings, electronics, seasonal clothing, and toys. The biggest challenge for U.S. consumers will be that demand will outstrip supply. To overcome it, consumers will need to pull forward holiday shopping rather than wait till Thanksgiving and after. Retailers can help consumers get ready earlier through their messaging. We are going to see more aggressive fall marketing campaigns to get customers into the stores in September and October with bigger Columbus Day events. Because if people wait until December to find product, it will be too late. And because retailers are facing supply shortages, they are having to make hard choices about where to fill store shelves and display racks. Most retailers ensure that their products get sent to the most dense shopping markets, so these secondary and tertiary markets will not have the full array of inventory. As a result, product will be available in some places and not in others. Shoppers aren't going to get too excited for the holidays if there is no product in the stores. While he foresees the supply chain will eventually work itself out, it won't be a quick fix. So inflationary pressures are likely to continue until it does. So that was the gist of it. The article goes on, but that's really what I wanted to share with you is just that retailers are urging you to shop earlier this year for your holiday goods, and I think that's a very smart idea because we just don't know what's going to be on the shelves in November and December. So it's best to go ahead, start making some purchases now, and just get ahead of all of that so you don't have to worry about it. And that helps you pay for it over a longer period of time, and that makes it a little bit easier on the pocketbook as well. So I think this year for the holidays, we're going to have to do more planning. We're going to have to think about things earlier, and we're going to have to expect some major shortages coming our way. So I just wanted you to be aware of that, so you could start making some plans and not get caught unknowingly in this supply shortage later this year. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button, and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And I wanted to announce our summer sizzle review contest. So we're going to be giving away prizes for reviews. Five people will win one-on-one sessions with me. Ten people will win You're Already a Wealth Heiress, my book that is on the list of all-time best wealth books by Book Authority. And 20 people will win a Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio set valued at $197. All you need to do is leave a podcast review on Apple Podcasts. That will get your name in the drawing one time. And if you've read the Wealth Heiress book and leave a book review on Amazon, that will get your name in the drawing two times. And winners will be announced in about 30 days on my podcast around September 15th. And I really, really, really appreciate everyone who has already left reviews. Thank you so much. And good luck. I hope you win something. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.